So the second question is, if I, if I live near my college, should I commute or live on campus? Um, I think that you should try to live on campus, but uh, coming from myself who went to uh, a school that's 60% a commuter school, um, a lot of people lived nearby campus, if not like 10 minutes away. Um, the MBTA um, commuter rail stop was at my campus. So a lot of people from South Boston or just in Boston would commute to campus from the commuter rail, which is extremely convenient. Um, but I would also n never see those people at night or at clubs or organizations. Um, and like those are typically people who like uh, are not your average like traditional student. Like they're typically like uh, people with like families to raise and they don't have a lot of money. But bring the kid to the club. Not that kind of club. Not that kind of club. <laughs> <laughs> like, like dance club, bowling club. Yeah, dance club. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, but no, you're right. Like, bring them to the club. Like, let them. Whatever. They're just, they're just an appendage, not like an additional person. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, um, I think I've seen like a couple. I think my campus did have a, a daycare which helped out with yep. people who have families. Um, <laughs> but, you know, again, I like we had said earlier, there'd be commuters who would stay over people's, um, like, residence hall rooms because they had organizations at night and they just didn't want to, like, go to their car and then drive home and then drive back. Even though, like, these people would live 10 minutes down the street, it was just, like, easier to camp out in people's rooms. That's um, why you make friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like for a couple hours. And then it, deal with it. it there's also like it for RAs like living in a residence hall like, like I've, I've been uh conditioned to say residence hall instead of dorm room. <laughs> uh, me too, but I give up. <laughs> I'm, I'm too I'm embedded in my brain. Um <laughs> no, but I think that also living on campus like you get uh programs that yep. RAs have to put on and so then you're you're able to you know, participate and get free things, you know, kind of things that you pay for already, but it's <laughs> it's in a new, exciting way that you get to make new friends. Um, I think... I, go on. No, I was going to say, I think if the reason that you're not living on campus is because you have a family or kids, there are some schools that have, like, a housing option for families. Mm. I think you or I had one. Um, where it's, like, a separate apartment or complex and it's just for students who either have, like, children, spouses, something like that. I don't think there's a lot of uh, apartments, so it is probably limited. But um, if you're really interested, you could probably put in a request for it or just look more into it, look into schools with that option. I think uh, another thing that uh, Bridgewater also did recently was uh, they just allowed um, co-ed rooming. Yep. Um, so it's like a, a guy and a girl could live in the same room uh, directly. Um, so it's like, again, if you have a spouse or any type of situation, then you can, that's, it's allowed to, to do that. Um, yeah. I think the question, if you're a traditional student, the question isn't whether like you have a family to take care of, but you're going from high school to college right away. I think the question to ask is, how often do I think I'm going to go home? Yeah. Because yeah. if you're going to be home six out of seven nights a week, don't go to campus. Yeah. Don't live on campus. Um, if you know that you're not ready to have the independence of going to campus and being on your own, that's fine. Now everyone is ready for that at 18. Um, but don't pay for the housing. Don't incur the debt. Don't ask your parents to pay for it. It doesn't make sense. You could be saving money doing that. Um, I had one of one of the guys in my dorm room in my dorm freshman year, my residence hall first year. <laughs> I mean, it's we were we were hard. we were told to tell not the first years too. Um, in my residence hall first year, he lived in Williston, which is fifteen minutes away from Champlain, and he would go home every weekend. Uh, and then he would come home, or he would come back to um, Burlington, and then like half the time during the week he would go home again. And I was like, why are you paying for this? <laughs> Yeah, and I, especially, like, with my school having a lot of people who live nearby to, you know, pay for housing, mm -hmm. um, 
which is, is again what I recommend personally. Um, but then they would be with roommates that they didn't like. Mm-hmm. So then instead of trying to like make rooming agreements with their roommates, they would just go home every weekend or almost every night. Yeah. Um, and I mean, <laughs> it's it's sad that like then their roommates kind of like win in like that not compromising situation because yeah. they're just kind of like oh one less person let's take over the room <laughs> um but then it's like you're still paying out your pocket or your parents pocket for a room that you're not using yeah I feel like it's hard to to tell if like you're gonna be that kind of person like even if you do live close you don't know if you're gonna be the kind of person that doesn't mm-hmm. do well in college so if you do decide to live on campus and maybe after like first semester realize yeah. that it's not for you take that step to move out and save yourself from the debt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't just keep going with it yeah. and like going home because you're gonna regret that. And we've seen too many kids. We talked about this. We've seen yeah. like so many kids who just like stay the full year but are never in their dorm rooms. Yeah, which is crazy. And that's that's ridiculous. That's like five thousand dollars a semester. Yeah. So you could be saving five. Five thousand dollars. Plus all the gas you're using too to get home. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. To, the, uh, the gas that you're using, um, or if you're if you don't live close enough or you don't have a car on campus, the buses and stuff that you're yeah. paying for, like the and flight also, all the way back to California for yeah. the every weekend. Every it adds weekend. up. It adds up. <laughs> Or even, um, like, if you eat at home and you yeah. don't eat at school, you're not using the meal plan that you paid for. That's usually that's rolled into dollars. The, yeah, so that's not fun. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, it's, uh, I obviously lived on campus when I was in Vermont because it was far away, so I wasn't mm-hmm. making that commute every day. Uh, but my wife uh, went to Riviere, which is very close by to where she grew up and where we live now. It's still, it's probably actually closer now than where, where we live, but... She commuted every day of her college life, saved a bundle of money, does not have any debt now. Uh, she regrets it, at least not doing the first year and meeting people. The first month in particular was extremely lonely. Uh, this is not part of the question, but we did talk about clubs and taking your kids to clubs. <laughs> so the way that she got her friends was she joined drama club and met a bunch of people that way and then was able to stay in their dorm rooms during mm-hmm. that kind of awkward I have an hour to kill type yeah. type phase instead of going to the library. So should you commute or live on campus, you said it depends on how you feel. I say it depends on your financial situation. Yeah. And it's kind of a it's, mix. It's, def- it's definitely <laughs> yeah, a, mix. It's a mix. So I think that you need to consider both of those options and Ideally, what Mackenzie said, take the first semester and live on campus, get to make those connections, yeah. see how you feel, and then decide if you want to commute every day and take it on for the second semester. Also, look at the reasons you're leaving if you go for a semester and then you, you go home. So if it's because of the roommate situation, see mm-hmm. if you can get different roommates. Or if it's because you just don't feel at home on the campus, you don't like it, look into transferring instead of just singularly just saying, well, I'll move off campus so that I don't have to be around there that often. You still want to enjoy your education. Even if you are commuting, It's you still want a college that fits you. It's, that's still an important part. Not three more years of being miserable. Not three more years of being miserable, but you're at home. Yeah. And another uh, thing, if you decide to commute and you live, like, right next door to the campus, um, then, like, another thing to consider is, like, well either befriend a lot of people in the residence halls and like stay with them during the daytime and then so you have like a place to go or um get make your car which i saw a lot of people did um just Just live in your car (laughs) yeah (laughs) no (laughs) i mean if you're paying for parking you might as well just yeah (laughs) if they accommodate rv parking no I would say put, like, a survival kit in your car. Um, Just, like, snacks and a blanket. You can go to your car to nap during the day. Uh, A lot of people did that. It's so so useful. I work so far from where I live right now. Yeah. (laughs) And then another... And I take so many car naps. (laughs) It's useful. It's so great. A little nappuccino. Love it. (laughs) Um, but, like, especially on my campus, parking was impossible, especially during the week when, like, commuters would come and park. They would they would take up all the parking, not blaming the commuters. I mean, you got to go to class. Um, but so during the, during the daytime, there would be absolutely no parking. And so a lot of commuters would get to campus to get a good parking spot at, like, 
sometimes like 6 30 7 a.m and their class wouldn't be till like 8 30 so they would get there kind of like pick a spot and then just sleep so it's some determination it's yeah not do that quite quite a couple of my friends would do that and i'm like yeah it's a it's a plan and it's a cheap plan (laughs) (laughs) you're saving money definitely a plan it's they're saving money so i mean they gotta do what they gotta do (laughs) they had someone on campus so you can stay with them that too i mean it's whatever so that when you break up it's not (laughs) awkward (laughs) yeah Get Ooh. out of my RV. <laughs> yeah, just, just, uh, whatever the guest policy is there. <laughs> I know kids that uh, would also bring one of those, like, hammocks that you can, like, wrap yourself yes. in. They would just tie it to the trees. I mean, if you're comfortable sleeping in public Hammock with thing. that. You it's college. Everyone sleeps in public. Like, it's not, yeah. like, a traditional, it's, like, you tie it's, like, it's like a blanket. Like, you know how there's, like, the thing? flat ones, yeah. and then there's the scoopy ones? Scoopy ones. The scoopy ones. The scoopy ones, scoopy ones yeah. <laughs> Oh. So you could like cover yourself. That's the official. Yeah. So, oh. like, so it's yeah. like dark. I get you now. Yeah. I thought yeah. you were just like folding a t-shirt. And then... <laughs> <laughs> you like for real? No, it's an actual yeah. hammock. Okay, okay. It's yeah. not like a blanket that you just. Yeah. <laughs> but they're also useful. <laughs> just roll yourself in a blanket and lay there on the quad. <laughs> in That's between two trees. Enjoy Honestly, the Honestly, not something that I would put past college students. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. no. It's mm-hmm. uh, there was a group of people I know who had hammocks, mm-hmm. and they would uh, just you know set up a hammock. Wherever they went. I mean, I was a little jealous when I walked by and saw them, like, napping in, like, their cocoon. So but I... W- <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a nice See. day, you don't even need the hammock. Just roll it on the quad, like... Oh, yeah. Bring a the blanket. nap is the grass. <laughs> yep. Just bring this sweatshirt and just stuff it on your head. It's great. Pull the ties to the... <laughs> oh, no, I just meant use it as a pillow. Oh. <laughs> Get the uh, sunglasses. I'm all about cocooning. <laughs> <laughs> just like pitch a tent in that is I mean that's home. really good. I if you're if you suffer from migraines, that's a great idea. Use it as a cocoon. I had migraines for a while. Oh, I thought you were talking just, about the tent. No, no, no I, I mean tents are a good idea too, but like if you suffer from migraines, get a tent. <laughs> pitch a tent. But no, like <laughs> just in general or like if you're commuting and you have a really bad migraine, it sucks. Just take a little nap, put like a blanket or a coat or a sweatshirt over your eyes and your pitch car. a tent it's in great. the library. It works. It just had the library. <laughs> I mean, there's no signs that you can't. I can't they make so signs. many times in the library. <laughs> I'm doing it quietly. <laughs> I'm so was, um, Oh my gosh, this is kid. His name is Peter. <laughs> Shout out, Peter. Well, Peter. Parker? <laughs> no, not, not that oh. one. Yeah. Different Peter that I went to school with, and he would fall asleep literally everywhere. Mm. And everyone knew him. He's the sweetest kid. There was a Facebook group called Pictures of Peter, Peter Sleeping. Oh, and they would take pictures and post it to this group. He was part of the group. He loved it. And he said he kind of misses it. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm really, I kind of miss that part. I'm like, yeah. I do too, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Yeah.